Hello and welcome to Cornish Walking Trails today, a circular walk starting in Pole Ruin. <laughs> today it's a five mile circular walk. We're going to go on the shady side of the river foyer up to Pont Pill over the headland taken in Lanteglos Church and then we're coming back along the coast which is meant to be quite challenging all the way back to Pole Ruin. Our walk today comes from a Bob Acton book around the River Foy. It's walk number one, Pole Ruin, Lanteglos and the cliffs. Pole Ruin is on the east bank of the River Foy. So for our walk today we've parked here, we've parked in Foy, this is the main long stay car park. Parking up to 24 hours for September 2021 and it's £6.30. It's quite a big car park. <laughs> We've got to take our doggy on the ferry. How do you think he'll do? He's been on it before, hasn't he? He gets yeah. a bit nervous of it though, doesn't he? I know, he? he tended to hug me a bit, didn't I he? I don't think he's got sea legs. <laughs> no. He's just got four legs. <laughs> and a tail. <laughs> so that's what we're heading for, the Pole Ruin Ferry. There we are, daytime service is 9.45 to 5.15. So we've decided to park here in Foy today. We've done that, it's just simpler really to get here. And what a great way to start your day by getting on a ferry. Thanks ever so much. Well, Cheers. Well, thank you. We alighted on the whole ruined side of the River Foy. Got a fantastic view of Foy from here. Of course, Pole Ruin is dominated by the working shipyard. It's lovely to see so much activity, so many boats in there being worked on. I love Bob's opening paragraph. It says, this is a splendidly varied walk, including panoramic views of the often busy scene at Foy Harbour. The peaceful wood enclosed waters of Pomp Hill, a lovely old church set high above and dramatic cliffs overlooking beautiful, unspoilt beaches. Now that's a big promise, so let's hope this walk lives up to it. I'm sure it will actually. <laughs> okay, so we don't have to do point one because we came across on the ferry and it says continue ahead along East Street, which will be on your left and got some steps on the right signed to the hills. Oh, okay. Come on then. There's an argument to be said that Pole Ruin has the best view in Cornwall, that of Foy. And there are some idyllic little cottages here. I a bit controversially, I kind of think Pol Ruin is on the shady side, whereas Foy enjoys the full sun. So which side is better? I don't know, really. Wow. Ooh, one or two steps. A couple of things I know about Pole Ruin, Sarah. Yeah. One is it's incredibly pretty. It is. <laughs> it's also a very active shipbuilding port and it has been for centuries. That, I don't know if you 1922. saw it. 1922. Yeah, see Toms and Sons. But um, yeah, going back over the decades, I mean, many, many ships were built here and it was actually the go-to place for your craft. So they built boats here for pretty much anybody, but one of the trades that they were supplying boats for was the smuggling trade. 
Very good. Yeah, and apparently before they actually had drawings to show, well, not before they had drawings, they obviously had drawings to show people, but they actually would make scale models of the boats so that when someone was going to be buying it, they could have a proper walk around and actually have a look at it. They oh, could then wow. modify it before they actually finally built it. That seems a lot of work. I don't know if they still do that. <laughs> CGI, mate. CGI now, yeah. <laughs> but they, they built them for both smugglers. Yes. But they also built them for the customs men as well. Now, if you were a boat builder in Polruin, whose craft would you build faster? The smugglers, <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> You'll find this walk in most walk books, I'd guess. We found it in three of ours, and they all start at various points. So you can park in Foy, get the ferry across like we did, start at Polruin. You can park in Polruin and do the walk we're going to do now. You can also park on the cliff in a National Trust car park, the other side of the church. And of course you can do it either way round. So if you've done this walk, which way round did you do it? Where did you start? Be interesting to know really. So we came on this leg of, of the walk that we're on now when we did our Foy Hall walk and we'll yes. put a link to that at the end of this video because that is a gorgeous walk it and is. if you come to Foy or you're staying in Foy that's probably the must to walk around it's the area. Classic walk isn't and it? And that one involves two ferries. Yes, great fun. <laughs> Is it about 30 years old, 25, 30 years old? Mid 90s, I'd say. Yeah, so a couple of things have changed already. <laughs> I think we should start this again. The book. the book was dropped, it's not thrown away. <laughs> it's a really good book for its history and its content, it's brilliant. However, the instructions can be a bit woolly at times, and you, you read them and you reread them, they, they kind of get a bit confusing. you noticed you come across a bench right a bench. you think a weird place to put a bench and then you go up towards bench and suddenly there's a fantastic view of Foy it's almost like I thought about it it's brilliant wow gorgeous view so if you're enjoying our video today, this is pretty much what we do. We take you out and about in Cornwall and try and find a really nice walk. Um, if you do, then please consider subscribing. It's free on YouTube and it really helps us out. So we can come back to this point and go to Lanteglos and we'll just follow that Badinic one. Right, so we're going to go down here and we're going to find a spot for some lunch. Indeed. Yeah. Coming down to this little bit of creek side, it's a diversion to the walk. We will have to climb back up that hill, however, it's well worth it, it's so picturesque. This little place is quite busy now. Everybody's choosing to stop halfway on the Foy Hall walk. We're not part of that crowd, are we, today? What, doing the Foy Hall walk? Yeah. No, we're not, are we? I love this little place in I so do too. Wherever you look, there's echoes of the past. You've got, did you see the yeah. notice board for the yeah. dues? For, yes, um, landing your manure. Landing goods, yeah. And then I think that's the old lime kiln there as well. Yeah. Did you see the swallows were nesting in the barn over there as well? Gorgeous, it's such it? an idyllic spot just to take some time and sit still, isn't it? It is. It's gorgeous. Anyway, we're going to walk off lunch now. Right. It's a steep climb up okay. to the church. All right. Oh, I'm ready for that now. Oh, good. Sure, 
There we go. It's quite easy to follow the signpost. It's called a lift and drag. <laughs> a new technique of it. <laughs> the stream with its little tiny waterfalls. It's idyllic. Catching your breath. It's quite steep, isn't it? It's quite hard work coming up here, yeah. isn't it? I wouldn't want to be carrying anything up here of any weight. There is a legend that St. Willow, who Lanteglos Church is dedicated to, he had a bit of a fight. Did he? Anyway, somehow he had his head cut off. Oh, never good. Decapitated head. He carried it all the way up this hill apparently and that's where they sighted Lanteglos Church. I know, wonderful myth, isn't it? <laughs> so he had a decapitated head. And he got up here. He did? What, what did he put that in his rucksack? So if he can do it. How would he even know where he was going then? That's how work. <laughs> it's all true, is it? You read it in a book? Yeah. It's all true. Climbing up here. It's making me feel lightheaded. Hi. <laughs> no, that doesn't work. No, ow, it's quite ow, impressive. Ow. Well, hang on, can you talk now? No. Uh, well, further up. Ah. Where are we going? Fuck off. All right, okay. Ah. So you can see the tower from here, can you? Yeah. Ah, okay. Through the trees? Yeah. Let's have a look. Wow. The church has just used old headstones. Okay. This one still has some of the original engraving. Distinctive shape. Our King's England book from the 1930s. If you watch us regularly, you know we pull it out quite a lot. And it says here on a lonely hillside with only a farmhouse for company is a treasure house of lovely things. The church has a fine medieval tower and some Norman work in the south doorway. Near the porch is an old cross with niches in its head, sheltering figures of the Madonna and Child, two saints and the crucifixion. You go down steps to a great porch and down further steps and into the church itself. Here are splendid old wagon roofs and woodwork old and new. The bench ends from the 15th and 16th centuries have quaint heads. Found any? There's loads to choose from. They're all different as well, aren't they? Look, there's two faces here. Oh gosh, yes. Oh, he's got like a swan coming out of his hat. Isn't he? Oh, amazing. There's letters there. What's that? IP. IP. <laughs> you wouldn't do that in the church, would you? No. <laughs> ah, there's another one. Looks like he's. Oh, is that the man with the dolphin round his head? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I see. It's a lovely church. Huge. And the book did say it was a bit wonky. And despite the restoration, they hadn't quite evened out the barrel ceiling. And the pillars still lean. They are not vertical. <laughs> Amazing. Well, we have a good view. Come out and watch the dogs and then we'll yeah, swap. Yes. Have a look. Hello. Hi there. Oh, yeah. Hello, baby. Good boy, aren't you? Really oh, good, wow. good boy. A little tiny book full of information, totally dedicated to Daphne du Maurier. Of course, you can't come up this way without mentioning Daphne du Maurier. This church is where she was married in a simple ceremony to Boy Browning on the 19th of July 1932. She wore a blue suit, only three members of her family were present. And the best man was the local boatman, George Hunkin. Why? Wow. <laughs> yeah. And they got married here? <laughs> yeah. They both arrived by boat up Pomp Hill. It sounds pretty impromptu, doesn't it? I'll, yeah. You can be best man. Yeah. I'll go like I am. Let's get married. <laughs> so this is the view that she would have had when she went into the church. Yeah. Okay. After some debate and <laughs> looking at the map, we're going this way. <laughs> Down the hill? Yeah. Okay. So he does say, passing Church Town Farm. Yeah. Beautiful, isn't it? Look at that church back there. It's beautiful. When we both noted, it's huge. It's really wide, isn't it? It is a big, big church. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere. Where yeah. did the congregation come from? Well, that was going to be my question oh. to you, because I don't know. Go on then. Pole Ruin? What was the question? Where did the church get its congregation? I don't know. 
Paul Ruin. <laughs> we'll go with Paul Ruin. <laughs> so Bob does tell you in his little book that if you need a breather coming up this very steep hill, which you do, to turn around and admire the beautiful view of the church. And he's quite right, what a beautiful view. This road's not very wide, is it? It's not. It's one of these roads where you can't easily look over the hedge either to you know, no. be lost. Unless you're 10 foot tall. Or in a bus. Double and if a bus. car does come down, where are we going? Um, yeah. Very narrow, isn't it? Yeah, you can tell that. It's grass. grass in the middle of the road. <laughs> <laughs> so something we haven't done for a while, Sarah. Gate leaning. A bit of gate leaning. The view is absolutely beautiful. There's Lanteglos Church, Foy, nestled behind the woodland, behind the church. You can see all the ridges of the man-made hills from the China clay tips. It's quite beautiful, isn't it? Atlantic Bay. Yeah. I always wanted to come here. Thank you. All I feel as though I've done since we left Pump Hill Creek is puff and walk uphill. Do you feel a bit Oh my lord. I was just looking at the view. Oh. <laughs> quite high up, aren't we? Wow. Dobman Point just kind of in the misty bit. Gosh, it's quite busy. Anyway, we're going to pick up the southwest coast path, which we think is through the style, and turn right, follow it all the way back to Pole Ruin. What a delight this should be. Coastal views all the way. <laughs> They say that the view looking towards Atlantic Bay from Pole Ruin, looking back from the headland, which is we're going to be walking to next, mile over there. <laughs> is supposed to be one of the most beautiful views in Cornwall. I can't wait, actually. I just need some clouds. We're, we're not quite dressed right for the heat. You won't pick this up on camera, but should have worn shorts today. So it's towards the end of September as well, isn't it? So it should be cooling down a bit, but Every it is very year, warm though, today. We get caught out, don't we, by an exceptionally hot day. And then you just get this little breeze that comes off the sea. It's lovely, it cools you down. Oh. In Daphne du Maurier's book, Vanishing Cornwall, she recalls a fishing trip off Atlantic Bay. She tells us how she fell foul of a local superstition. The hare and later the rabbit were held in such abhorrence by fishermen that to mention either when at sea brought spoliation of lines and nets or dearth of fish. I learnt this to my cost at the age of 21 when trying for Pollock off Atlantic Bay near Foy. The weather was dull and glancing at the cliffs nearby I observed to my companion, the Cornish boatman who shared such expeditions with me, that we might have done better to stay ashore and go rabbiting instead. To my surprise, he pursed his lips and slowly pulled in both our lines. That's done it, he said. We'll catch no fish today. Shaking a mournful head, he pulled for home. I had spoken the fatal word. Beautiful beach, Atlantic Bay. Beach. Yeah. It's gorgeous, isn't it? It's You've been the mid. One of the most romantic spots in Cornwall. Let's see why. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Look at the sailing yachts that have just kind of anchored offshore. So you can wander down there, it looks quite steep. Perhaps that could be a secret coves video. That's a good idea. Oh, we always seem to get one every year that catches us out. We end up struggling with the heat. I almost grabbed a pair of shorts this morning, 
that I could change it from my jeans to my shorts. I think we can list them back. So it was Zena last year. Oh, Zena nearly killed me last hot, year. wasn't it? Yeah. Where were we the year before that? Was it the um, Port Isaac to... Yeah, Port Quinn Port Walk. Port Quinn Walk, wasn't oh, it? Oh, was I was hot. really worried about the dogs on that walk. We've got plenty yeah. of water. Yeah. But it's just really hot. Yeah, it's hotter than we expected, isn't it? It must be 23, 24 degrees. Yeah. Mm. Are you ready to do the last leg towards Pole slightly Ruin? slightly more refreshed now. So we've got a bit of cloud cover. Yes. We've had a little 10 minute break. Close. Yes. Onwards. Take on some water. Yeah, onwards. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Come on then, boys. Unbelievably, we're still climbing. <laughs> wow, this is a challenging walk. I don't think we can go up much more. It's where we go around the corner and it's like that, I suppose. <laughs> oh, some good news. We're at the highest point. I can see the rooftops of Pole Ruin and that means I can have an ice cream. <laughs> oh, the childish things make you smile, don't they? It's all right, boy, we're nearly there, darling, and then you can put your paws in the water. Come on, then. Oh, sweetie pie. And his tail still wags. So we're at a fork in the road. A so fork in the path. So there is a marker post here. It says um, Pole Ruin, one mile following the coast path. Yes. On this side, I will film it in a minute, it says uh, Vevery Parking, 370 yards, National Trust. Okay. Which is across the field there. If it wasn't so hot and our doggy wasn't kind of, he's so, showing signs of struggling a bit, isn't he? So yeah, for his welfare and ours, down. we're going to walk back across the field yeah. rather than doing the extra mile around the yeah. coast path. Yeah. It's just too warm. It's caught us out today. Come on then. Yeah. Come, Come on, on my sweet. Okay, so we've got to a car park. It's this footpath towards village. So I'm going to pop out away now because it says this is to the village. So I think we just follow this path. I agree. Yeah. Can you smell that ice cream, Andrew? I can. Let's I just can follow the smell, smell of the ice cream and the beer. <laughs> Sarah, they obviously knew we were coming. They've put the bunting out. <laughs> Don't you just love the Cornish flag bunting? Look at that. <laughs> Beautiful cottage here. It's called the Old Dairy. In Bob's book, he does say there's some of the cutest cottages. And I think I'd agree. They are so cute. But very difficult to actually live in these days if you've got a couple of cars and there's restricted traffic and cars in the village. But what a view. I'm back in Pearl Ruin and the sun is dancing, bringing out the copper stone of these beautiful cottages. It brings you back to that debate. Do you live in Pearl Ruin or do you stay in Foy? They're both beautiful at the end of the day, aren't they? Cream one with the uh, dark blue windows is called Barney Cottage. <laughs> That's brilliant. And do you like the one next door to it as well? With the brickwork around the windows. The blue, the whites and the brickwork look lovely. It's called Bunce Cottage. I could spend a whole day here sketching and fill up a sketchbook. I would just be in heaven. And every cottage is different, isn't yeah. it? They're unique, aren't they? Absolutely Sorry. unique. Excuse me. Yeah, hi. This family down here, they've yeah. all got ice cream. I'll film them without them realising they're being filmed. <laughs> I just saw Andrew film that house. Holly House, £850,000, four bedrooms, one bathroom, two reception rooms, and nowhere to park your car. I just put it on record here, so let's see, uh, what is it today, 16th of September? Something like that. Right, okay, so if Holly Cottage goes and it's bought by a subscriber, yeah. how much commission are we on for that? <laughs> I want 1% of that. I've got my ice cream. Couldn't find a cone. It's a 
got a tub instead from the village shop. It's very nice. I've got a honeycomb delight. Mm. Nice. <laughs> Are you a happier boy now? Is your daily wagon and everything? Oh, we did the right thing, kind of a bit shorter. Today comes from a Bob Acton book around the River Foy. It's walk number one, Pole Ruin, Lanteglos and the Cliffs. A quick look at the map. We start here in Pole Ruin, walk up the creek side to Pont Pill, climb over the headland and that's when we picked up the southwest coast path, taking a little shortcut back to Pole Ruin. Two ferries in one day. It was very nice. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a fantastic walk, pole run up to Pill Pond, had a picnic lunch. Super spot for lunch. Visited a beautiful Lanteglos church. We've always wanted to go there, there because, as you said, Daphne de Maurier, that's where she had her wedding. Yes! And then it was a bit of a slog up over the hill, but the views at the top. Oh, the reward of that view of Atlantic Bay. Gorgeous, absolutely stunning. So um, we got a little bit lost with the instructions. Yeah. The book's <laughs> relatively old. It was published in the 1990s. This walk is published in a lot of the more recent books as well. Yeah, though. so you might want to choose a different book to actually do this walk from. The instructions um, possibly are a little bit out of date, but there is a nice bit of history in that book. Yeah, so it's all six, in all, out, of ten, six out of ten. Yeah. And if you've enjoyed our walk today, you might consider supporting us with the ability for you to make a donation on our website. If you'd like to do that, the details are in the description below. Thank you very much.